London, the capital of Great Britain, and one of the foremost cities in the world for tradition and ceremonial. ceremonials held each year in early summer, but the state splendor of June 1981 was exceptional. London was decorated with flags and heraldic crests as Great Britain anxiously awaited her important visitor. His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, King of Saudi Arabia. Preparations were underway for months to ensure that all the places His Majesty would visit reflected the importance attached to the royal visitor. Tuesday, June the 9th, 1981. The arrival day had dawned. While His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdulaziz Al Saud flew over Europe, in London's Hyde Park, the Royal Horse Artillery gathered for the formation of the saluting party. Gatwick Airport to the south of London, the Royal Air Force Guard of Honour take up their positions for the welcoming ceremony. Once the King's plane had touched down at Gatwick Airport, the four-day state visit of King Khaled of Saudi Arabia had begun. True to his importance as the ruler of the nation that has long and close relations with Great Britain, His Majesty King Khaled was accorded the finest hospitality by the host nation. When the royal jet landed at 11.30, the famous clock of Big Ben struck to signal for the guns to fire a royal salute. The Duke of Kent, cousin to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, was at the airport to greet the royal visitor. Busy schedule of meetings, receptions and banquets had been planned for the visit of His Majesty King Khaled, which is seen as the climax of a two-year program to forge stronger links with the Arabian Kingdom. The Duke of Kent is a personal aide-de-corps to Her Majesty the Queen. 
And at the airport, the Duke, on behalf of the Queen, welcomed the Saudi Arabian royal party. His Majesty, King Khaled, was paying Britain a special tribute by making the state visit. The King receives so many similar invitations which have to be refused. It is a mark of the two countries' mutual desire to cement already close relations. For all members of the reception party, it was an immense honour to meet a King whose international influence and respect makes him a decisive leader in world events. Rolls-Royce heads the fleet of cars to drive His Majesty King Khaled to the Royal Train, which will take him to the centre of London for a full welcoming ceremony. The Royal Train pulls into Victoria Station. It's usually bustling with people making their way to and from work, but on June the 9th, on the occasion of His Majesty King Khaled's arrival in Britain, it is a very different spectacle. Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh are there to greet His Majesty King Khaled. It is an opportunity for the Queen to reciprocate the generous hospitality she has received in Saudi Arabia. An important member of the Saudi Arabian royal party is His Royal Highness Prince Sultan bin Abdulaziz, the Minister for Defence and Aviation. He would be holding important talks alongside His Majesty King Khaled throughout the four-day visit. Here at Victoria, the Queen introduces her visitor to some of the most important members of the British government and defence forces. The Right Honourable Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable William Whitelaw, the Lord Mayor and the principal citizens of London. Also assembled for the initial introductions are senior military officers from the British Army, Navy and Air Force. Sir David McNee, Commissioner of Police of the Metropolis. Councillor Harley, the Lord Mayor of Westminster. Outside, the Guard of Honour found by the Brigade of Guards attends. His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, accompanied by Queen Elizabeth and with a sovereign's escort of the household cavalry, will leave Victoria Station in a carriage procession. The 
royal procession of five carriages will take the king and the rest of the Saudi Arabian delegation through the streets of London to Buckingham Palace. This will be the first opportunity for the people of Great Britain to see His Majesty King Khaled and to express their own welcome. As the royal procession departs, the Guard of Honor presents arms and the two countries' national anthems are played. Meanwhile, at Buckingham Palace, the London Royal Residence, the ceremonial is in preparation, awaiting the arrival of the royal parties. The Guard of Honour is found by the Queen's Guard, made up to a strength of 100 provided by the Coldstream Guards. The Queen's colour is also present and accompanied by the band of the regiment and the corps of drums of the battalion. carriage proceeds down Whitehall, where buildings house Britain's main civil service departments and other government offices. The procession is headed by mounted police, followed by the first, second and third divisions of the Sovereign's escort. The royal carriage then skirts Trafalgar Square and passes through Admiralty Arch into the Mall. Friendly relations between Britain and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia are nothing new. At the turn of the century, Britain was the dominant power in most of the surrounding Gulf states. In 1915, Britain signed a treaty recognizing the Kingdom's own sovereignty. The early understanding between the two countries has been maintained since then and has led to British-Saudi cooperation in such areas as defense, education, medicine and engineering. Trade and financial links are important, but both nations also share a respect for tradition and the past. Cultural awareness is growing as a result, leading to an even better understanding between the two countries.
the grand entrance of Buckingham Palace, a detachment of the household cavalry awaited the royal arrival. His Majesty King Carl Ed would spend a busy afternoon at Buckingham Palace. He would first be received by the Lord Chamberlain and then introduced to the most important members of the royal household. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II visited the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in 1979, so she had met most of the members of the delegation two years earlier, including Prince Sultan. The Queen had so enjoyed her visit that she had taken a close interest in the arrangements to ensure that her guests' stay in England should be equally successful. Later that afternoon, St. James's Palace, just half a kilometre from Buckingham Palace, was busy with activity. For here, His Majesty King Khaled would receive an address of welcome by the Lord Mayor and councillors of the City of Westminster. Both of London's royal palaces are in the City of Westminster, one of London's many administrative councils and Councillor Harley is the Lord Mayor of Westminster. He had met His Majesty King Khaled earlier in the day at Victoria Station. Your Majesty, we, the Lord Mayor and citizens of the City of Westminster, are delighted to extend to you a warm and heartfelt welcome to our city as guests of our beloved Queen. Ya Sahib al Jalala, Anna Umdad London, Wa Aba al Majlis al Baladi fi London, Ya Takadamun al Jalalatikum, Behadi al Kalima al Tarhi, Bijalalatikum, Kadaif, Ali al Malika Elizabeth al Thani. The evening of the first day was celebrated by a state banquet at Buckingham Palace in honor of His Majesty King Khaled bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. Important citizens of London were privileged to be invited to such a rare occasion. No efforts had been spared to make it a memorable evening. The guests, after being presented to the Queen, His Majesty King Khaled and the Duke of Edinburgh, made their way through the state rooms to take their places in the ballroom to await the royal party. All the staff wore state livery according to their rank. The Queen's bodyguard of the Yeoman of the Guard were on duty in the state rooms. At the banquet, the Queen was to give a speech in which she welcomed His Majesty King Khaled to Britain. She recalled how much she enjoyed her visit to Saudi Arabia and to see at first hand the country's remarkable achievements. King Khaled, in his reply, spoke of the relations between the two countries, which go back to the founding of the kingdom. The development of that mutual friendship continues with the exchange of visits by senior officials from both governments. His Majesty thanked the Queen for the invitation to her country and wished the British people both progress and prosperity. It was a marvellous occasion at the end of the first day of His Majesty King Khaled's state visit and was obviously enjoyed by all those honoured to be invited. It takes a world leader of the standing of His Majesty King Khaled to bring so many eminent people together. And, uh...
Day two, Wednesday the 10th of June, 1981. After the royal salute, sounded by the Buckingham Palace detachment of the Queen's Guard, His Majesty King Khaled and other members of the Saudi Arabian delegation are ready to leave for the first appointment of the day. As they leave Buckingham Palace to make their way to St. James's Palace, they are accompanied by the captain's escort with the standard of the household cavalry. St. James's Palace was the official London residence of the monarch between 1698 and 1837, when Queen Victoria made Buckingham Palace the centre of court activities. Representatives of foreign countries are still accredited to the court of St. James's, since the palace has continued as the official London residence of the court. The offices and residences of the Lord Chamberlain and other court officials are located here, and the traditional ceremony of proclamation of a new sovereign also takes place from a balcony within the palace. His Majesty King Khaled has come to St. James's Palace today for a reception during which the High Commissioners of the Commonwealth countries and ambassadors accredited to the court will be presented. The Queen's bodyguard of the Yeoman of the Guard are on duty as a member of the Lord Chamberlain's office conducts the royal party from the state entrance to the throne room. It is here that the ambassadors and high commissioners will be introduced to His Majesty King Khaled. I present Lord Michael Fitzalmah, the Marshal of the Diplomatic Corps. Your Majesty, may I present the High Commissioners and the Ambassadors accredited to the Court of St. James. The High Commissioner for Mauritius, the Dean of the Court. The High Commissioner for Swaziland. High Commissioner for Jamaica. The High 
High Commissioner for Dominica. The High Commissioner for Cyprus. Your Majesty, that is the end of the diplomatic corps. If you would like... Everyone present had welcomed the chance to meet the ruler of a country closely linked to their own through history, politics or economics. Many countries, developed and underdeveloped, have close links with Saudi Arabia. And this occasion had presented an opportunity to show the respect with which the kingdom is viewed throughout the world. The pomp and pageantry of the first day was continued throughout the visit of His Majesty King Khaled. His return to Buckingham Palace was no exception, with a welcome in the forecourt by the old and new guards. Old and new guards, stand easy! Later that morning, King Khaled was taken to Downing Street for talks with the British Prime Minister, Mrs. Margaret Thatcher. The day before, Mrs. Thatcher had been speaking in Parliament and had described the recent Israeli raid on the Iraqi nuclear plant as a grave breach of international law. This was taken as the starting point for talks between His Majesty King Khaled and the Prime Minister. Mrs. Thatcher had met His Majesty King Khaled in Saudi Arabia earlier in the year, and they were both pleased to have the opportunity for further discussions on international affairs. Besides the Middle East, they discussed Russia's role in East-West relations and the Palestinian issue. Saudi Arabia would like Great Britain and the rest of Europe to play a more influential role in seeking a settlement of the Israeli-Arab conflict. The king was accompanied by Prince Sultan, who later in the day held separate talks with British Defence Secretary John Knott. The presence of Britain's senior ministers reflected the emphasis the British government is placing on strengthening its ties with the Saudi Arabian Kingdom.
The atmosphere was relaxed and friendly, as Mrs. Thatcher had taken her most important ministers to Saudi Arabia in April. They had already built up an excellent rapport with their Saudi Arabian counterparts. A state visit always has a busy schedule, because there are so many people who like to take the opportunity to give their respects to His Majesty King Khaled. On this occasion, it is a reception at the Dorchester Hotel, given by the Saudi Arabian Ambassador to Great Britain, His Excellency Sheikh Nasser al Mankwar. Occasions like this give time for a deeper understanding of cultural differences to develop. The Saudi Arabian delegates and guests can explain what Saudi Arabia is trying to do at the present time. They can speak in more general terms of King Khaled's ambitions, as their country launches into a third five-year economic and social development plan. It is His Majesty King Khaled who has given the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia the encouragement needed for the program, which involves vast numbers of foreign workers, thus affecting social customs and cultural patterns. Again, it is His Majesty King Khaled who presides over this remarkable process.